I put together this uh, piece because it dawned on me that it's actually 20 years since the industry was born, and it was born here in this country. So I, I think it's time to to look back and, and think a little bit about what's what's happened over those years. And over the previous, I, I, I saw the previous two presentations, I walked away feeling really smart and I learned about ad monetization and whatnot. I guess this is a little bit more of a cultural piece and, and a, a look back in history. So I, if you learn something great, that wasn't really the intention of, <laughs> of mine. Um, there's going to be lots of graphs and figures indeed, uh, both because I'm an economist by trade and also because I, I, I want to look smart and numbers, numbers make me look smart. Um, for journalists, Chris, I, I guess you're taking notes, um, there's, there's journalist-friendly punchlines. Uh, this is to make it very simple. We, we, we give away everything at the beginning and, and then you can walk to the next show. And, uh, and also, this is also for the people with severe attention disorders, like myself. So this is also to keep me on track. Number one, we went from snake to $50 billion in end user spending in less than 20 years. And that's much thanks to free-to-play, frictionless distribution, and universal UI. Uh, and this year, uh, mobile games will represent over 50% of gaming end user revenues. And it's a bigger industry than worldwide recorded music plus box office together. Um, now, let's see whether these facts are indeed so. We're going to go up, walk a little bit back in time and start at the beginning. This is where it started, 1997, from the hands of software engineer Taneli Armanto Espo, Finland, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes drive from here. Uh, little did we, at least did I know, what kind of a revolution in video gaming culture and business this would create over the next 20 years. So we ask ourselves, what the hell happened here? 20 years. And, you know, this is worth a pause because this is the first time in video gaming history where we have across all of these main platforms, we have the same game uh, being number one across all of them. That's the first time. So it's a, it, it is, it is a, indeed a big milestone in the industry. So what happened in between these two in only 20 years? And uh, mind you, I have only about 15 minutes to tell that story, so it's only so much per year. Um, well, the last few years have been pretty amazing. Uh, this is worldwide games and user spending. It's growing a lot, and it's growing predominantly because of mobile. This is what mobile looks like as a, as, as a piece of, of the bigger pie. And as you can see, uh, this year, I haven't, I haven't added the 2018 because I, I want to look backwards at the facts. But this year, mobile is going to be, as an individual piece, bigger than console and PC together. Staggering growth over the past few years. Why? Why is that so? Well, three main reasons. Uh, 2.5 billion users can be reached with arguably, debatedly, low f distribution costs. Uh, I'm getting to a point here, but compared to where we were, the distribution costs are in fact low today. Number two, universal user interface. Touch with killer apps being defined ages ago already. Uh, fragmentation, even though some of us think that, think that fragmentation is an issue on Android, you should have been working in the industry some years ago when fragmentation actually was an issue. And number three, free. The games are free uh, to download, and 95% of people don't pay in those games. So the free value proposition is a huge catalyst for growth. So, as I also argued, uh, if we compare to other forms of media entertainment, box office, and, um, and the re worldwide recorded music, that's what that looks like. Uh, recorded music ain't growing so much, neither is the box office, whereas mobile games is, is like a skyrocket. Uh, and the scale is the same across all the, all the graphs, so it's for easy reading. Um, so, who would have known a few years ago that this would be the case? Because it certainly wasn't always so. Um, mobile games was perhaps uh, an even harder industry back in the days than it is today at least a different kind of difficult. Uh, and it did take a few steps to get we, where we are today. So we're going to jump in this time machine and go backwards in time and look a little bit where we came from. So I guess maybe some of you have heard me talk through this story before. Uh, 
Uh, and with the punchline being that that there, that hockey stick over there, hang on, there, that represents free to play. That represents the in-app purchase uh, technical um, technical innovation on the on the platform, and I have all kinds of other funny funny anecdotes on the slide as well. Uh, this time I won't do that. I will just show everything at once. Uh, those are some of the milestones of the industry. Uh, there's a lot to be told and there's a lot left out. But this time, let's talk instead about the unsung heroes of the story. Let's go back back a bit a bit further and ask ourselves what was it like in the iOS in the pre-iOS era of mobile games the first 10 years let's plot that instead we are we're still following end user generated revenues uh, just because if you follow money usually you get to some sort of facts and and truths um, for journalists again we're making this a little bit more clickbaity you won't believe these four old facts about mobile games. Um, first up, what you will see is that the left-hand scale, those are single digits, right? So this is not um, a huge industry at this point yet. So 10 years ago, 2008, uh, all the mobile games on the planet, they summed together to less than the very top video games today can make in one year. So that was the size of the industry. Uh, but let's go to those four interesting facts along the way. Number one, when the industry was very, very small, some of us literally tried to do the impossible. We're going to go straight to Riot Entertainment. Riot E was a Finnish mobile game startup uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s, that tried to cre create global mobile entertainment when technologies like Brew, like J J2ME Java or Symbian were still years away. Uh, now, interestingly, these guys also had a higher valuation at their A round than the entire mobile games industry would generate for many, many years to come. Um, this here is the trailer to the infamous Riot On documentary. It is available for free on YouTube, uh, worth checking out. Six young men from Finland. And we'd like to have sound. Six young men from Finland are about to get $20 million to start a revolution. A revolution in mobile entertainment. 666 working days later, it was all gone. What the fuck happened? <laughs> I think they left something in the region of three or four million euros also in debt as they, as they closed doors. So, fast forward. Um, we were dealing with what today feels like the most mundane, bizarre things. Things were a lot less obvious uh, back then than they are today. And for that, we're going to go to the Nokia N-Gage QD value proposition. I guess a lot of us remember the N-Gage. Uh, and in here, Nokia is promoting the key features and positioning at what really feels today like a totally different time. So, naturally, this is but one example. But in here, the value proposition was that you can change games fairly easily. Uh, times were radically different when this was the TV ad to drive mobile games adoption, right? So, again, a fit bit for further. This perhaps is the most important piece, and the most important piece that really changed eventually with the app stores. Popular games were of really bad quality. And this was a plague that was going to keep the industry from growing uh, for quite some time. Uh, a bit of a mouthful, but we're going to go through it anyways. Bad games lead to high churn. Now picture an environment where there was no free demos, really, 
uh, there was just descriptions of games and screenshots on lackluster mobile web portals. Uh, to download a mobile game, you would have to part way with your hard-earned cash without knowing much of anything in advance for the, of the game. Uh, and naturally, you'd expect to find the very best games in the top 10 lists, right? Wrong. Uh, top 10 was usually filled with branded big IP games, which tend to sell well in the featuring spots. Uh, problem was, they were often badly designed uh, and, developed, and badly developed money grabs, a ripoff. Um, to top it off, there weren't any user reviews at this time. So what I present here next is the average review scores by the industry journalists, this is where Chris James comes in, um, at the time. So this is, this is how industry reviewers were rating the top sellers at that time in 2008. The games in Italy were really amazing. Um, now, interestingly, um, as a result, gamers who bought these games, they wouldn't come back. Oftentimes, you'd pay for a game and you would never actually receive the game to begin with. But if you did, you were pissed off that it was a bad game. So just for a comparison point, uh, I took yesterday the US top 10 grossing uh, average score and, and mapped it on a similar scale. And this is what that looks like today. This is the top 10 uh, in the US. So as a, from a quality standpoint, things have changed dramatically because of the, the amount of games and the frictionless distribution and just simply the fact that the best games sell and poor games don't. All right. The last one. We actually came pretty close before the iPhone already. There were the right elements, but was, they were just cooked with the wrong recipe. We were almost there. And for that, we welcome back uh, Nokia Engage uh, back on the stage. We um, present here the Nokia N81. N81 was not only a great name for a phone, uh, it was also the first to sport the N-Gage platform, and it really did get a lot, a lot of things right. Let's cue the video. Now imagine, those were simpler times. A smartphone with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The truth is, Nokia got a lot of things right with the N-Gage, but it was unfortunately plagued by bad execution, poor distribution power, uh, fragmentation, and a lackluster technology. So fast forward to today. This is here. This is us guys, uh, and also a great meme that we, we should resurrect. Uh, making games is hard and making successful games is even harder. Um, given that there's been phenomenally successful mobile games come out of nowhere, there is a lot of supply on the market. Uh, that graph basically tells us that there's a new mobile game every second, second minute. And that type of market, to succeed, you've got to be really, really, really good. And since there's a lot of good games that can now afford to buy advertising space, uh, to promote their games, the price for that advertising space has gone up, way up. As such, 
I guess the age-old saying, to succeed in mobile games, uh, you have to do more than just a good game. So how much more then? Well, in here is some of the things that you need to be able to succeed in mobile games. There's in fact quite a lot of things to, to, to think about. And in here, it's nothing new, but I think the most important lesson here is, if you don't enjoy the top grossing games or any of the top grossing games in mobile, you'd probably not want to make one. Because those games were voted by consumers uh, with consumers' money to be the best. All right. So the final punchline. The whole video gaming industry has indeed changed because and thanks to mobile games. This is fertile ground for success. So one would imagine that there's been quite a lot of success in the space, quite a lot of unicorns caught in this space. Indeed it is so. So with the final piece, this is what this looks like. Video gaming unicorns, games that have grossed uh, over a billion in lifetime revenues. We look back over those 20 years, we look at the whole video gaming industry, and the first 10 years of mobile, uh, there was 18 uh, games on PC slash console uh, that dawned and made over, over a billion in lifetime. There was zero on mobile. And three out of those 18 are free to play. We go move forward, 08 to 18, six on PC. That's interesting, that's dropped quite a lot. So we ask ourselves, what does it then look like on mobile? There's 20 on mobile. And out of those 26, 22 are free to play. Interestingly, six of those are from Scandinavia. So, in terms of the future, well, that wasn't really the topic. And there's a whole heap of other magicians to talk about that uh, at this conference. But in sum, I think the future looks bright uh, in our fight to cure boredom of consumers worldwide. Uh, in sum, a lot happened over those 20 years, way more than you can recount in 20 minutes. Did my best. Um, and this year, mobile games is breaking records. And in 2019, it's going to be breaking records again. And then we can compare it to perhaps other industries than music and the box office. Thank you. Good. Okay, does anybody have a quick question for Wilhelm? Okay, I'm, uh, what, what industries are we going to compare it with? Like the arms business? What, what, what are you looking the at? The arms business is damn big. So is, so is the I illegal drugs business is also too big to compare it to for, okay. for the time being. No. So, so those, are, those are your top reference points, weapons <laughs> and, and drugs. But yes. apart from that, um, one, one quick question I do actually. Uh, very good talk. Always, always good. Always good, good to have you here. Um, this is a trends track. Uh, what... Of the current industry trends, hyper-casual, blockchain, PVP, what, what do you think is going to, drive, have, going to drive most revenue growth in the next 12 months? Um, can, you, can you be one or two? It's fine. Prob in terms of the existing aspects, I would have to say probably hyper-casual is continu going to continue to grow. Uh, blockchain will take some time, so will some of the th these other areas. Uh, I think the... To adopt or to create a game that utilizes blockchain, it changes a lot of things that you have to think about in the game, and and it's more of a catalyst for 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 the future rather than a revolution. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right.